So essentially, this girl, Brittany Dawn, is like a you know, quintessential fitness um, influencer on Instagram and YouTube. She decided to do that thing that most people do when you're influencers and try to kind of like, you know, um, maximize your revenue stream, in uh, especially in something that you're really good at in terms of losing weight and being fit. So she decided to have these plans, these kind of um, workout plans and dietary plans that you could buy online on her website. Um, they're split into different kind of categories. There's plans for people that are, for girls that are in a run-up to go to their wedding, 60-day kind of wedding fit. They're there's plans to have a flat tummy, the usual kind of stuff, right? And that's quite, you know, bog standard. You get the kind of plans, you work out, you do your thing. But what made her different and what was kind of her um, unique selling point was that she was offering these plans in addition to offering plans that um, involved her being your one-on-one -on -one consultant, uh, being somebody that you could, you could kind of get her on the phone, you could talk to her via email, whatever it may be, and she could tailor make tailor make the workouts and the dietary plans to your exact needs now coming from a client service background myself and coming from the service industry when i heard that straight away my alarm bell started ringing because i knew straight away if this girl is as popular as they say she is right i think she's got like a million followers across all social media platforms it'd be now and impossible for her to uh personally one-on-one -on -one, contact all these consultations with her fans and people that are that like her because you have to imagine that there are some people out there who generally desperately do need to be held um, by the hand and guided through the entire process of losing weight from dietary plans to sleeping to working out they need that assistance so if you're charging them three hundred dollars which doesn't seem that much in the grand scheme of things can depending on you know when you when you in comparison to how impactful this could be to your life how it could change yourself how you can you know open new horizons blah 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 there is no real value you can put on somebody being able to positively impact your life and make and change it for the better but unfortunately that didn't happen um it seemed like uh this britney girl let the momentum or let the workload get on top of her i'm sure it probably happened it probably started in a sense of like she fell behind on one client one client turned into two two, two turned into five five turned into 20 and all of a sudden it cascaded into this big mountain now where there's loads and loads of girls who have not been whose orders haven't been fulfilled whose orders haven't been processed and who haven't gone haven't got any indication that they're going to get a refund so of course like all great um social media dramas it played out on social media completely because you know britney like a like an idiot decided to ignore the users which is never a good thing to do right i think most people need to know that if you are facing some sort of uh backlash on social you're facing some sort of backlash from your customer base for the most part not social for your customers um in private you should approach them in private and give them that decency or give them the respect that they deserve and make sure that you resolve it in private because what people will notice especially disgruntled customers like myself or disgruntled employees is they notice quite quickly that you're unwilling to talk about things in public so you're unwilling to talk about things in private but you're then willing to talk about things in public to save face so what they realize is that if you're more worried about your public perception than you are our personal relationship the only way that i can hurt you the only way that i can make you do what i want you to do the only way that i can resolve this is to punish you to, is to embarrass you in public because you obviously you care about their, their opinion more so than you care about our opinion right which is crazy isn't it because britney really should be should be trying to look after her paying customers because they're the people that made her an influencer without these people she would be nothing so she needs to treat those people with respect but unfortunately that doesn't happen so because of that now people went on social media they made loads of posts there's i think there's a there's a bevy of videos here on YouTube that I'm looking at now that talk about the whole subject. Um, you see Britney Fuller, influencer, apologizes after a flood of customer calls her program a scam. Britney Fit Dawn Fitness career is ended. Britney Dawn Fitness, there's more. Britney Dawn influencer, scammer, it's a sociopath. Britney Dawn scam. Britney Dawn is not a victim. Loads and 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 loads of posts. And then more likely and more... Um, um, what happened recently is I had an interview with um, uh, a channel, I think. I'm not sure what channel. I think it might be called ABC News, which I'm going to click on here quickly. And we can quickly watch what her excuses are for not being able to fulfill the orders of her customers, right? It could be something, you know, grandiose. I don't know, a family, a family friend got, I don't know, diagnosed with a terminal illness, but I'm not wishing on anyone. Or, you know, she was, I don't know, she was going through some mental issues, whatever it may be. Let's really think and wonder why it is an, a, me, a social media influencer could not fulfill the orders of her customers, then decided to actively ignore them, actively delete some of them. Sometimes she blocked some people from posting on her thing and in generally just didn't address the issue until it got to the point that it's got to now let's wonder what she said here we go 
Women turned to her to get their dream bodies, but then claimed she ripped them off. And tonight we're hearing from Brittany Dawn herself after the social media influencer suspended her online coaching. Here's Marie Saavedra. So I guess that's a good thing, right? That's kind of a good thing. She's kind of taken off. She's kind of taken her coaching offline until everything's been sorted out. I guess because the weird thing with these social media people and um, influencers for the most part, they're fans as well online. I bet you there are some girls out there who still are rooting for her, who still are saying that, hey man, she probably didn't know, she's trying to do things, be understanding, it's really hard to do, to be a social media influencer, the workload probably got too much for her. There's probably still a lot of apologists out there for her. So it's usually never, it's usually, it's, it's, I've never really seen a social media person get blasted online and it be and the verdict on them be unanimous it's rare it's usually quite rare it's usually sometimes there is a small fraction even if it's 20 percent of people who are still backing them and still going to be ride or die which is fucking bizarre to me considering um considering just how uh brazen some of them are with their kind of quote-unquote scams but let's let's see what what, what, what she says her photos and videos helped her turn working out into a business. Good morning, YouTube. But in just a few days, the story of breaking down fitness went from inspiration Ugh. to public humiliation. Uh, I'm sorry. The Dallas influencer sold exercise and nutrition plans online, but countless customers in North Texas and beyond say the personalized training they paid for never happened. I never heard back from her. We'd go weeks at a time without any communication. And that money was gone. Now, Brittany Dawn is answering for it. And, it's, and that's a sad thing, right? Because it's like, they're, it's like for the most part, right? How do you say this be sensitive? For the most part, um, they're just selling you a dream, aren't they? I think for all the... I know there's some people... I won't mention their name because I don't want to put their names associated with this Britney Dawn girl because she's obviously a scam artist, but there's others who are doing great work. But those, even those girls that are doing great work, the ones that post like transformation clips of their clients or their customers who have done their program and got great results. For the vast majority of people, I would assume, because I'm just taking it as an example from going to my local gym, most people don't do the necessary work. Most people don't follow through. Most people don't, even for me, I don't sometimes follow my diet all the way through. I work out a bunch and I think I'm going to offset the working out with, uh, I think I'm going to offset my diet with my working out. That obviously isn't true because, you know, 98% of a good, um, uh, every percent of weight loss is in your diet. So even for me, someone like me, I don't necessarily go about it the right way. So I'd imagine the general public or the general person on the street, the average woman on, on the internet, on social media, is usually getting sold a, a dream, right? And they don't mind, they're complicit in it too. They are aware that most likely they're not going to end up looking like Britney if they work out, right? There's some, there's a part of it that's just like based on genetics, might be based on the fact that she was, she's been working out for another X amount of years and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that, that's involved in it. It's obviously an occupation that kind of pays her well and she kind of, you know, is able to scam people out of thousands and thousands of dollars, potentially or allegedly. Um, so there, there is an aspect where I think the influencer and the customer understand that you are taking part in a transaction that doesn't really yield any results. But I think the responsibility is on the influencer to just play along and to be sincere about it. Because at the end of the day, these people who most likely are never going to look like you, even if they do the necessary work, are paying uh, for your, are paying basically your salary, are allowing you to live this lifestyle. And the one thing you cannot do is just shit on them. The one thing you cannot do is just totally ignore them. You can't do that, especially nowadays. Like nowadays, customers are more savvy. Customers are more aware. Customers are more understanding and under are more understanding of their power they have to bring down brands, to bring down stores. They know the power that they yield. Hence, why uh, people really take a lot of stock into Yelp reviews in the US or into Google reviews in the UK or whatever it may be, whatever platform you use for restaurants, all that sort of stuff in terms of review systems. They, t they put a lot of credence into it because they know, by and large, people that have really great experiences will um, prof will boast about the experience that they had in a good place. They'll tell everyone. They'll tell everyone on the sun of a great place they had. Think of the last great restaurant you went to. Think of the last pop-up shop you went to. Most likely than not, it's for, it came from a personal recommendation or a recommendation you saw online because people can't stop shutting up about things that they love, right? They do it all the time on social. So don't believe the hype. Like, people only talk about things they hate. No, they don't. People talk about things they love all the time. There's a reason why you heard about Bird Box because everyone was watching it and everyone loved it for the most part. So when it happens, when it's, when it's the other way around, where they don't like something, be very scared. Be very, very frightful if they don't like something because everyone will know. Everyone will find out when they don't like something. So um, 
I just don't understand why an influencer would risk everything they have, everything they've built up over the years. Because again, there is no cheating in this influencer race or this influencer war, unless you're somebody that's trying to do it in a really weird way where you're trying to get followers in order to leverage yourself, in order to get brand deals and all that sort of stuff. Mostly, for the most part, most influencers have done the hard work. They've worked their fucking asses off, whether it is even videoing themselves in the gym, which is not easy to do because you have to have someone with you. You have to get some. It's just all exhausting things to do. Right. So I just it just baffles me why they would want to risk all of that uh, just to take home a couple of thousand dollars when there's potentially so much more money down the table that down the line that you're leaving on the table for, for in the long run. If you just be a good person, if you just treat people with respect, if you just fulfill their orders. There's so much more you could gain in the long run. But instead, they see the short the short kind of monetary gain and they go for that. And unfortunately, some of these influencers, they don't also understand that they're in a really weird predicament because at the end of the day, you've kind of built a business around being a person of social influence, right? You've built yourself around being the person in front of the camera. Um, you built yourself up in, in, in terms of someone you're meant to trust. The moment that trust is gone, the moment you can't appear on camera, what do you do? You've quit your job. You decide to go full time in YouTube, full time on Instagram. What do you do now? You've taken two years out of work, two years doing social media stuff that hasn't yielded any good results. That that if you put on your CV that you were a big social media influencer back in the day into a company and they Google you because most companies do Google you to see what you look like, see what you've done online, and they find article after article of you potentially scamming customers, that might really fuck up your employment status, your 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 employability, right? The, the likelihood of you securing another job might be in real jeopardy or because you you didn't want to fulfill a couple of orders. In a new interview, I jumped into an industry that had no instruction manual. Um, I'm basically going through uncharted territory and I'm doing the best that I can to the best of my ability. True narcissist. She's automatically painting herself in, as a victim and that's a real skill and that's something that I've seen um, in the experience that I've kind of gone through with the company that I was working for and the places that I've been at and the other companies I've been at who've also faulted. Usually that narcissist attitude, that delusional attitude can sometimes work because it can sometimes drive you through walls you are never meant to break through, right? It can be the driving force that gets you to um, introduce a new service, right? Introduce a new product, um, launch something ahead of time, secure funding, whatever it may be, a business partnership, those kind, that kind of delusional, that kind of delusional POV, that delusional drive is can sometimes be worthwhile, but more likely than not, it isn't. It drives everyone up the wall, and your customers and your employees have to suffer the consequences of your actions, because what then ends up happening when the, the shit finally hits the fan, your delusion will not allow you to accept the fact that you are the one to blame, that you fucked up. It's no one else's fault. But somehow this Brittany Dawn girl has um, figured out in her head. That because it's uncharted territory, because um, making money online via uh, the amount of influence or the amount of recommendations you're able to share with people is a new, is a kind of the wild, wild west, right? We've seen shit happen with the Lucas Sabat case, with the Snapchat uh, spectacles, which is still ongoing. We've kind of seen how tricky it's getting there. We've kind of seen the backlash to some of the models that are involved with the Fire Festival thing about how they were kind of, you know, mis-selling what the festival was and what it was going to be. Do they have a responsibility on their end? I don't really know. It's the wild, wild west. And we know for sure we're definitely going to hit a point where this stuff is going to get regulated and everyone's going to be able, and everyone's going to lose money. So effectively, she's fucking up for everyone because because it's a wild, wild west and you can make it on rules for the most part. People are just doing what they want and customers having to suffer the consequences of it. Sometimes you stumble upon a great influencer who does a great job and goes above and beyond to make sure their customers are happy. Sometimes you get a shitty one like her, who decides to fuck everyone over, and then sits there on camera with a weird smirk on her face and says, it's because it's uncharted territory. God almighty. We matched Dawn's hate, responses hate to YouTube her customers' influences. They're the worst, aren't they? Starting with when problems began. This started roughly a few months ago, um, and I acknowledged the ones that would come forward to my best ability. Not so, says Melina. To Bruce. my best ability. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? To my best ability. What does that even mean? of Alan. I had um, had my son in March of 2017. A new mom who had issues with her order years ago. 
When they didn't hear back from Dawn, many tried to reach her on social media. Kayla Lippins of Michigan said Dawn deleted posts. I commented on one of her pictures and I was like, hey, I sent you emails, I've messaged you, like I'm supposed to be doing this, deleted it right away. And she admitted it. Yes, I was. When you see comments like that on your own stuff, um, repetitively showing up, it, it gets very hard sometimes. We also heard from women who- Oh, it gets really hard, so you delete the comments. That's ridiculous, man. That's, ri that's, 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 it's the, I don't know. Who said Dawn agreed to refunds if they signed non-disclosure agreement. That's where your blood starts to boil, right? So not acknowledging my um my orders, cool, one thing. Not acknowledging that you've made a mistake, cool, one thing. Not acknowledging that, you know, you should deliver on your service, cool, one thing. Then acknowledging it and telling people to sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, if they want to secure partial refunds is insane. So I'll give you a refund if you just stop, don't stop talking shit about me online. Oh, and it's only going to be 25%. Why? Because you spent all of it. This is insane. This is literally insane. Literally the most insane thing you've ever heard in your life. And again, it goes back to the whole, I'm not too sure if this is a consequence of the fake it till you make it um, uh, the kind of wave that was spreading across social media during the kind of... Um, uh inception of influencers on social media space because in the, the day there's a lot of influencers who start in the beginning who are very clever who kind of bought followers who probably gamed the system and then kind of rid that wave right as it kind of progressed upwards and kind of slowly kind of maintain their level of influence on social i'm sure that happened for the most part so there are some people out there who have kind of tried to game the system in a similar sort of way you've heard of many stories of people you know let's say fashion week for instance people just go get dressed up go to fashion week and just walk around outside shows they don't go to any show. They just walk around and get and hope they get photographed. Tag themselves in brands that they tag themselves in brands that weren't that didn't sponsor them or didn't give them free clothes, but insinuate that they did in the hope that you can secure uh, branding from other brands when they see the brands that you are associated previously. So there's weird games everyone plays, right? There is a part of me that kind of thinks, okay, you know what? It's it's not. I wouldn't say it's fake it till you make it. It's more finessing. You can maybe finesse the system in order to kind of get where you need to get to, right? To kind of make the moves you want to make. But by and large, um, cream rises to the top. And if you don't have the goods when you enter the door, you're going to fall falter anywhere by the, in the long run. And this seems like a consequence of it, right? Where it's like these people on social, the people that are influencers who are frauding their customers, scamming them out of loads of money, are more worried about the perception of what others think of them than they are about the customer's well-being or the customer's satisfaction level. They'd much rather give them the money and tell them to shut up so no one else knows what's happening than just deal with the issue with the customers, which in turn will just deal with the whole problem overall. Because if she went all out of her way to address every single person that got frauded, to give them all full refunds, to say that she's going to be putting systems in place that are going to make sure this doesn't happen again. She's going to be hiring people to come on board and to do things and to help them out, even if it's hiring within her own community, wherever it may be. If she made those adjustments and people saw after six months, after a year, that she was actually improving and that she was actually getting orders out quickly and she was calling people, she was following up with stuff and she, people actually saw a change, they will be the first people to go online and correct the narrative. Because they'd want her to get more business. They'd be like, oh, no, you've got to back my girl, Brittany. She's really changed. They'll be the first to do it. But in an, in a narcissist's brain, that's not how it works. How it works is that you keep everything bottled up. Every shh, 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 shh. Hey, hey, but no, don't say, don't say, don't say nothing. You keep everything shush on the hush in the hope that it just goes away. But it never goes away. It's the internet. You type in Brittany Dawn's name now on Google. It's just going to be all about scamming fraudsters. She's, it's fucked. She's, it's over, basically. Her, her social reputation is completely done. Yes, but I was uh, following poor advice from an overreaching lawyer, and I am no longer requiring NDAs to be signed for partial well, or full refunds. These are mistakes Dawn says she's trying to own, but we'll have to see if it keeps her in the business of fitness. And I'm accepting the consequences for what I did um, in the public eye, and I'm moving forward to make things right. Just a complete scumbag, man. And again, it's not the fact that she done what. It's not the fact that she done this. I think that what's a, it's just a. It's the lack of um, lack of compassion, right? That's really the annoying thing about it. Lack of understanding. It's the fact that it's a repeated um, mistake. It's the fact that loads of girls on, like, online have been talking about her and saying that she's done shitty things. There's, like, there's the fact that there's a video online of her, of her getting confronted by some dude at like a fitness expo and he confronts her and some white knight steps in and is like, oh, back away. And she's like looking all sheepish and she can't really say nothing. You know when someone gets caught out and they lie in public? That's the fact that's annoying about it. 
It's like she just doesn't seem to understand what's going on. And there's an inability to really grasp the severity, the severity of the situation. But again, I'm hoping with everyone blasting on social, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make things change. Hopefully now people are more aware and I think of what's happening in the social media influencer space. And if anything, let this be a lesson. Pick your influencers, pick your people that you look up to with... Um, consider who you're following. Consider who you're going to invest money into. Consider who you're going to part with your money to, right? Like not everyone deserves your coinage. Not everyone deserves your follows and your likes. The ones that you do like who do a great job, promote them. Blast them out. Let everyone know how good this person does a job. Uh, job online um, delivering fitness plans. So the ones that don't do anything, completely ignore them. Let them suffer without getting any follows, any sort of likes, any co po coinage in their pockets. So that's anything I really understand. When her sub count drops, when she starts losing followers, she'll definitely change tack because that's going to eventually um, impact her bottom line. But until then, I'm sure this, this would be able to just continue. But like I said, I think we're, we're about to see a change. We're about to see regulatory inf bodies come in and probably try and regulate everything. And try and deal with it because I'm sure there's loads of things happening. Even with that, we haven't seen on social, we haven't seen on YouTube, we haven't seen covered on social media of people getting folded out of money and stuff. We've probably seen it. I'm pretty sure we have. So let's keep an eye on this and see what happens. And just be safe out there, man. Don't give your money to anyone and everyone. And if anything, just I don't know, do a quick Google before you're about to spend uh, an X amount of money on an influencers program and just find out what this what the temperature is out there. Because most likely than not, there's people out there who have kind of you know said. Um, who said things or revealed stuff that's happening with this person and how they conduct business so you can avoid uh, falling into that trap. But yeah, my, what you call it, my sympathies go out to anyone that got scanned, man, because I've been in that position before, man. These, these people are horrible.